Hi InfoTech, Mrs. Pancoke here. Today we're going to be working on lesson four about paragraph formatting. So we're going to set line spacing in text in between paragraphs. We're going to create and format, creating and formatting a bulleted list and creating and formatting numbered lists. So um, we're going to be using this par paragraph dialog box quite frequently. And um, you're going to be doing different indents. An indent is a blank space inserted between text and the left or right margin. A first line indent inserts blank space between the left margin and the first line of the paragraph. A hanging indent, common in legal documents and bibliography pages or like works cited pages, begins the first full line of text in a paragraph at the left margin. All the remaining lines in the paragraph are indented from the left margin. And a negative indent extends paragraph text into the left margin. Alright, so um, I'm going to use my um, file explorer to open up my data files. So find your InfoTech Word folder and then um, Go to your data files under lesson four. We're going to use the Beyond Books document. All right, and always, always enable editing. Okay, it might change the size of my screen again. That's okay. I'm going to close out of the navigation pane that I have open. And um, it says to click the View tab. Then in the show group, make sure that your ruler is turned on, okay? For this lesson, having this ruler up at the top of your screen is going to be very important. All right, it says to select the four paragraphs under acknowledgement. So click and drag to select the first four paragraphs. On the home tab in the paragraph group, so home tab, paragraph group, um, click the dialog box launcher located in the bottom right corner of the group. Verify that indents and spacing tab is active. In the indentation section of this tab, change the special selection by clicking the down arrow and choosing first line. The buy box should list 0.5 inches by default. Right here. Okay, as shown in figure 4-2. Okay, so your screen should look like this picture. Click OK, and the first line of each paragraph is indented 0.5 inches from the left margin. Figure 4-3 displays the ruler and the paragraphs with the first line indented you just set. So it should look like the picture, which ours does. Next it says select the four paragraphs under introduction. Okay, one, two, three, four. And it says um, on the horizontal ruler, click and drag the first line indent marker to 0.5 inches. Okay, so these little white things are markers, and the top one right here is the first line indent. If you hover your mouse over the different parts of this, you can um, get a screen tip that will tell you the actual name. So I want to make sure that I'm on the first line indent, and I'm going to click and drag, and I'm going to drag 0.5 inches. So you have to know how to use a ruler in this lesson, okay? The one inch mark means one inch, um, halfway between the zero and the one, that'll give me the 0.5 inches. Okay, next we're gonna select both paragraphs under equal opportunity, down here. Okay. And it says to right click the selected paragraphs and on the content menu that appears, select paragraph. So I right click with my mouse and I'm going to select paragraph. OK, 
Okay, it's another way to open up the paragraph dialog box launcher. It says to change the special selection to first line and then click OK. Alright, so basically all of our um, paragraphs except for the area under general is going to be a first line indent. So it says to save our document as, so I'm going to browse and I want to make sure that I'm saving it in my lesson 4 folder, not in my data file, so I'm going to click Word. I need to make a new folder and I'm going to call it lesson 4. Open it up and I want to call this B, this file B, um, B and B, oh, let's see, first line indent, okay, B and B first line indent should be my file name that I just saved. Next we're going to set hanging indents. So it says select the first two paragraphs under the acknowledgement um, heading, so just the first two paragraphs, and on the home tab launch the paragraph launcher. Okay, and we're going to change the special selection from first line to hanging. Okay, the by um, should still be 0.5 inches. It says click OK. The first line of the paragraph begins at the left margin where the remaining paragraphs are indented 0.5 inches from the left. This is a hanging indent. Typically you use a hanging indent for works cited pages or bibliographies. All right, under the same heading select the last two paragraphs. Okay, on the horizontal ruler click and drag the first line indent marker so it aligns with the left margin. I'm going to drag it to the left margin. Okay. And then it says you need to reposition the first line indent marker so it doesn't move when you begin dragging the hanging indent marker. Your markers on the ruler should match figure 4 4 right now, which our mind does. Okay. Next, it says click and drag the hanging indent marker. So the hanging indent one is um, kind of the uh, bottom V. I don't want. I want to make sure that I'm on the right one. Okay, and I'm going to drag this 0.5 inches. Okay, so that my paragraphs now match my top two paragraphs. Your document, so it says you have now repositioned the marker using the ruler and both paragraphs have hanging indents. Your document should look similar to the one shown in figure 4-5. Okay, we're going to save this document as in our lesson 4 folder. Make sure that your path is correct. You know, you want to make sure you're in your lesson 4 folder. You shouldn't have data files being viewable. And we're going to change this to B and B hanging indent. Okay, save. I usually tap enter when I want to hit save instead of clicking on it. Just is quicker for me to do it that way. Um, next, we're going to set left and right indents. So we're still using the same document from the previous exercise. Select the four paragraphs under introduction. And it says open the paragraph dialog box launcher on the home tab. And under the special group, we're going to select none and click OK. Notice that the paragraphs are now left aligned. It says select the first two paragraphs under introduction. Right click and click paragraph to open the dialog box launcher. And in the indentation group, it says change the left and right indents to one inch by clicking the up arrow. So you can click 
to change it to one inch, I am going to just type in one. I think it's faster. Oh, sorry. Okay, let's see. <clears throat> Change the left and right indents to one inch. Okay. All right, so both of these should be um, set to one inch. I'm going to click OK. All right, so it changes my margins or my indents, not my margins, my indents. Okay, next it says select the last two paragraphs <coughs> under the same heading, so underneath introduction. And it says on the layout tab in the paragraph group, it says click the up arrow next to indent left to set it to one inch. Okay, so you can click the up arrow until it gets to one inch. And for the right indent, we're going to change it to one inch as well. Notice that the paragraphs are one inch from the left and right margins now. Okay, so one inch and one inch to be listed right there. Okay, so your paragraphs in the introduction sections should look the same as they do in this picture right here. Okay, we're going to save this document as in your lesson four folder B and B left and right indent. I'm going to tap enter to save. Okay, so in that lesson four folder right now you should have three documents. If I go back here, go to my word folder and I'm in lesson four, I should have three documents right now. Okay, pause, leave the document open to use in the next exercise. Setting negative indents under the Equal Opportunity and Diversity heading, down here at the bottom. Select both paragraphs. Highlight, click and drag to select both paragraphs. Launch the paragraph dialog box launcher. Right now you can do it under the Layout tab or you could go back to Home or you could right click and choose Paragraph. Okay, and it says um, under the special group, select none and click OK. Then it says select the first paragraph under the heading. In the layout tab, in the paragraph group, click the down arrow next to indent left to indent the left side of the paragraph to negative 0.5. So I'm going to hit the down arrow. This time choosing a negative 0.5 inch. Okay, as shown on the ruler. So now my um, Okay, and then down here we're going to select the second paragraph and um, let's see, position your insertion point anywhere in the last paragraph. So you don't even have to select it, I could just click inside this paragraph. And then it says launch the paragraph dialog box. Under indentation group, click the down arrow next to right to choose point five inches and then click OK. When repositioning the indentations you can select or place the insertion point anywhere in the paragraph or multiple paragraphs. Select them and change the indents. So if you only want to change one paragraph, if you just have your insertion point inside of it and you um, want to change your indentation, that'll work. If you want to change more than one, however, you have to select. Okay. Next it says save this document as. I'm going to go to my lesson four folder. B and B negative indent. 
Okay. It says save and then close the file. Um, you could have left Word open. I didn't. Um, next, we're going to be changing our line spacing. Line spacing is the amount of space between the lines of text in a paragraph. All right. <clears throat> so here's some different line spacing options. We have single, one and a half, um, line space, double space, at least. Okay, so here's a table that kind of explains some of these different spacing options. Okay, we're going to open up the Beyond Books document. Go back to your data files. Lesson 4, Beyond Books. Okay. And it says, place the insertion point in the first paragraph under Acknowledgement. So I'm just going to click inside this first paragraph so I have my flashing insertion point inside the paragraph. It tells us to click <laughs> the pair in the paragraph group on the home tab. Click the line and paragraph spacing button to display the line spacing menu and options to add and remove spacing before or after paragraphs. It tells us to select the 2.0 to double space the text. Place the insertion point in the second paragraph. In the paragraph group, launch the dialog box launcher. And in the spacing group, change the line spacing by clicking the down arrow and choosing double. And then clicking OK. This paragraph is now double spaced. So there's two different ways to do it. You can go here and change it to 2.0. You could go to the paragraph group. Um, dialog box launcher and you can change the line spacing to double there as, as well. Place the insertion point in the third paragraph and we're going to press control plus two. Okay, that is a shortcut for double spacing. So control two, it will also will double space your paragraph. Next it says click the design tab and the document formatting group we're going to click paragraph spacing to display a menu as shown. Select double. Notice that the remaining document is double spaced. This feature in Word 2016 changes spacing for the entire document to include new paragraphs. When using the document formatting group to apply paragraph spacing, you do not have to select the paragraphs to use one of the built-in formatting commands. Save this document as B and B double spacing. So I'm going to go back to my Lesson 4 folder. You could click Browse. Okay, I don't want to be in my data file, so I'm going to click on Word up here in my navigation bar. Go to Lesson 4, and I'm going to save this as B and B double spacing. All right, we're going to use the same document in this next exercise. So get ready. The document that is open for the previous exercise, use that. And it says select the four paragraphs under the acknowledgement heading. Return to the line and spacing drop down menu in the paragraph group on the home tab. Okay, and we're going to set more precise spacing me measurements. Click the line spacing <laughs> options to display the indents and spacings tab of the paragraph dialog box. In the spacing section, click the drop down arrow, and we're going to choose exactly in the line spacing list. In the atlas, we're going to click the up arrow until it reads 22 point, or you could type in 22 into the box. We're going to click OK, and our line spacing is increased for those four paragraphs. We're going to save this document as 
in our Lesson 4 folder as exact spacing. <coughs> All right, and then it says to close the file. So you could go to File, Close. All right, then it says leave Word open, but we're closing the file. We're going to open that Beyond Books document again. So I'm going to go to Browse, Word, Data Files, Lesson 4, and Beyond Books. It tells us to select the entire document. So how I do it is I press Control plus A on my keyboard and it will se select my entire document. Okay, on the Home tab in the Paragraph group, click the arrow in the lower right hand corner to display the dialog box. The indents and spacing tab is active. In the spacing section, click the up arrow next to before until it reads 24 point. Whoa, 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 too far. Okay, review the preview and notice the increase of spacing in the document. So let's click OK. All right, and now my paragraphs are pretty far spaced apart. <coughs> With the entire document still selected, we're going to click the drop down arrow next to line and spacing options. And we're going to click remove spacing before paragraph. It says repeat step six and click the remove space after paragraph. So we're going to click line spacing options and we're going to click remove space after paragraph. Okay, the spacing before and after have been removed from this document. Place the insertion point in the heading acknowledgement. So I'm just clicking up here at the top. Click the layout tab. And then in the paragraph group, click the, um, the up arrow and increase the spacing after to 12 point. Okay, it says to use the format painter to repeat step 10 for each heading. So I'm going to go back to the home tab. I'm going to highlight Acknowledgement, and I'm going to double click on the Format Painter. And I'm going to select Introduction, General Performance Expectations Guidelines, and Equal Employment Opportunity and Diversity. Okay, use multi-selection, so I'm going to turn off the format painter or press escape on the keyboard. Okay, use multi-selection to select the paragraphs under each heading and change the spacing after to 6. Alright, so I'm going to use the control key to do multi-selection. So I'm going to highlight this first group, hold down my control key, and I'm going to select the paragraphs after in each section without selecting these headings. So let go, I'm going to scroll, let go of my control, but before I select this next part, I'm going to push down on control so I can select the next set of text. Okay, letting go of control so I can scroll down. Holding down control again, I'm going to select the last uh, bit of text. And we're going to change the spacing after to six point. So I could go to the paragraph dialog box launcher and right here where it says spacing after, I'm going to click once up to select six point, and then I'll click OK. All right, so it just gives a little bit more spacing after each paragraph. We're going to save this document as in our Lesson 4 folder, making sure that I'm in the right folder. Um, we're going to save it as B and B 
spacing before and after. Okay, then it says to close the file, but leave Word open. All right, next we're going to be creating a bulleted list. So we're going to go to the File, Browse, go to our Data Files folder, and I'm going to go to Lesson 4, and we're going to choose Alarm, a different document this time. I'm going to enable the, my editing. Okay, make sure I can see on my document. And we're going to select the two paragraphs below the phrase, Please Keep in Mind. On the Home tab, in the Paragraph group, click the Bullets button. Notice that solid circles appear before the selected paragraphs. Um, I have my formatting buttons turned on. I'm going to turn those off just so you can see clearly. I have these two dark circles before my paragraphs. Okay, next it says place the insertion point at the end of the second paragraph, second bulleted paragraph. Press enter. Word automatically continues the bulleted list by supplying the next bulleted line. Beside the new bullet type, if you do not know your four digit code and password, please get it from the HR department. <clears throat> There's a period at the end. Okay, and we're going to save this document as in our lesson 4 folder B and B alarm. Okay, let's see here. Okay, we're going to leave this document open to use the next exercise. Next, we're going to change a bulleted list. So select the entire bulleted list. To change the format of a bulleted list, click the drop down arrow next to the bullets button to display a menu. To change a bulleted list to a numbered list or vice versa, Select the list and then click either the bullets button or the numbering button. To remove one of the bullets from the library, open the bullets drop down menu and then um, in the bullets library select a bullet and right click to remove it. We're going to click the hollowed circle in the bulleted library and it tells us to save this document as in our lesson 4 folder, B&B &B alarm with hollow bullets. Okay, pause, leave the document open to use in the next exercise. Changing a bullet to list level. <clears throat> so, it tells us um, you are going to add an unordered list such as a bullet's such as bullets, appears with no rank over the other. Changing the bullet's list level can change the appearance of the bullet and indentation. Place the insertion point in the second bulleted item. We're going to click the drop down arrow next to the bullets button. And we're going to choose change list level. And note the levels that appear. When you point to the list level, a screen tip appears displaying the level. So this is level 1, level 2, level 3, etc. We're going to change it to a level 2. The bullet item is demoted from level 1 to level 2. When you increase or decrease levels, the indentation changes. See the markers on the ruler. 
Place the insertion point in the third bulleted list item. Click the drop down arrow next to the bullets button and we're going to change list level, this time selecting level 3. Your document should look similar to the one shown in figure 413. Save this document as BNB alarms with bullet levels. Okay. Select the second and third bulleted items. <clears throat> and we're going to click the drop down arrow next to the bullets button and we're going to point to change list level and we're going to select a level one again. The two items selected now match the first bulleted item. Click undo to return the bulleted items to the second and third level. Save this document with the same file name in your lesson folder on your flash drive or Z drive. So I'm just going to click the save button or control S on the save button on the quick access toolbar. Next we're going to insert special character symbols. The define new bullets dialog box provides options to change the alignment and add new bullet characters such as symbols or pictures. When you click on either option a new dialog box appears. So it tells us to select the second and third bulleted items again and we're going to um, promote them to the first level and then select all three bulleted items. We're going to click the drop down arrow next to the bullets button and we're going to choose define new bullet and it tells us to click symbol. The symbol dialog box opens as shown in figure 4-14. We're going to change the font by clicking the drop down arrow and choosing wingdings. So I'm going to go all the way down to find wingdings, which is right here. Okay, we're going to select the bell in the first row, sixth column, which is right here. Okay. It tells us to click OK to close the symbols dialog box. Okay. Notice I now have bells right there. We're going to click OK to close the define new bullets dialog box. And then we're going to save this document as BMB alarm update. Save. All right, next we're going to insert a picture. <clears throat> so the three, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> the three bulleted items are still selected. All right, so the three bulleted items are still selected. Click the drop down arrow next to the bullets button and we're going to choose define new bullet. This time we're going to click on picture. <coughs> The insert pictures location box opens. Microsoft has provided a new insert picture location screen where you can have the options to locate a picture from your computer, being image search, search or your OneDrive space. Click from a file. <clears throat> All right, and then browse your lesson folder and locate the arrow file. So I'm guessing that this is going to be in our data files again. Okay, and here's our arrow file. I'm going to click insert. Okay, and it says click OK to close the define new bullets dialog box. The arrow picture appears in place of the bullets. Notice that the size of the new bullets causes the text to be uneven. <coughs> So we're going to open the paragraph dialog box launcher and configure the three bullets to use a hanging indent 
with a value of 0.5 inches. I'm going to type in 0.5 and then click OK so that these are even. The hanging indent evens up the bulleted text as shown in figure 4-16. Save this document as B and B alarm update one. Okay. Um, leave this document open to use the next exercise. Next, we're going to change the alignment in a bulleted list. So, in the previous exercise, you learned to create bullets using bulleted lists, to create a bullet using symbols and to insert pictures as bullets. You can also change the levels of bullets by promoting or demoting the list levels. In the bulleted list, notice that the distance between the image and the text. Adding a custom bullet allows you to change this alignment. Select the three bullets items. and We're going to click the drop down arrow next to the bulleted bullets button and click define new bullet. Under the alignment group, okay, we're going to click the drop down arrow and we're going to choose right. Notice the space between the image and the text in the preview pane area. Click OK. Alright, so it just kind of moves our spacing over to the left. Save this document as our lesson 4 folder, BB Alarm Update 2. Okay. Next, we're going to create a numbered list, okay, using the same document that we had open before. Select the four paragraphs under Set Alarm, okay, and on the Home tab in the Paragraph group, click the drop down arrow next to the Numbering option, <coughs> okay, and we're going to select the option that looks like this one. Okay, the paragraphs now appear as an ordered list. Place an insertion point at the end of item number four and press enter. Notice that Word automatically numbers the next line sequentially. In the new numbered line, we're going to type leave the premises immediately. And it says select the four paragraphs under deselect or deactivate alarm. On the home tab in the paragraph group, we're going to click the drop down arrow next to numbered list and we're going to select the option A, B, C. This one right here. The four paragraphs are numbered and aligned left. Save this document as in your lesson four folder, B and B numbered alarm list. All right, next we're going to modify a numbered list so using the same document. Select the numbered list under set alarm. And to change the format of the numbered list, click the drop down arrow and um, we're going to choose then define new numbered format. Click the number style drop down arrow and you're going to choose the uppercase Roman numerals. The format for selected text changes to uppercase Roman numerals. In the alignment drop down list, we're going to choose right. Click the font button and we're going to choose Arial Black. Font size um, of 12. Okay. To see how the number numbering will appear, we're going to click OK. Um, to define a new number, so to close this, we're going to click OK again. All right. And our numbered list should... Um, look like this. Okay. Select the numbered list under deactivate alarm. In this step, you renumber an existing list using lowercase letters. Click the drop down arrow next to numbering list 
and we're going to click set numbering value the numbering value dialog box appears and to start this new list option button um, is already selected in the set value to section click the up arrow and choose F and then click OK your document should match figure 4-20 so you can if you don't want to start with A you can change the um, the number that you're um, setting it to now we're going to save this document as in our lesson 4 folder and we're going to name it numbered alarm list 1 setting and modifying tabs okay it says get ready open the per diem um, from the data files for this lesson um, let's see did it say to close this document yeah we're gonna close it all right all right, so next we're going to be setting and modifying tabs. Tabs are used to align text or numbers in your document. You can use the ruler to set tabs for a more exact setting. Use the tabs dialog box. As you apply custom tabs to select text, Word applies the tabs to the paragraph. So right here is a, um, a table that shows you the different styles of tabs and what they will look like on the um, the ruler. So we're going to open up the per diem document out of your data files. Okay. Always click enable editing. Okay. On the home tab, we're going to make sure that our show hide button is on. This is very important for this. Um, and then on the home tab, in the pair or place the insertion point on the blank line below meals, <laughs> incidentals, breakdown heading. Click the tab selector. So the tab selector is over here on the right, or I mean on the left. Um, until the center tab appears. So right now we're on left tab. If I click once it'll change to the center tab and I want my tab to look kind of like an upside down T. Alright, the horizontal ruler is shown in figure 4-21. Tab selector and then these are the different tabs on the ruler. If the horizontal ruler is not visible you need to make sure it is. Go to view ruler. Okay, it says click the ruler at the two and a half inch mark. So I'm going to click right here, making sure my insertion point is right here. This is also very important. Clicking right there. Um, the center tab appears as an inverted T. Click the ruler at the four inch mark to set another center tab. The ruler shows two tab settings. So here and here, two and a half inch mark and the four inch mark. Okay, I'm going to press the tab key and my insertion point moves all the way to the two and a half inch mark. I'm going to type Chicago, then I'm going to hit tab again, and I'm going to type New York. It says select the list of words starting with breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Okay, when I do that, my tab settings go away because my tab settings are only going to be applied on the line that my insertion point was. So if I want to set my tab stop for more than just one line, I have to select, um, select these different words. Okay, with the setting, when setting tabs, tabs are part of the paragraph formatting. The selected text will be affected by the tab settings after the tab key is pressed. Click the tab selector until the right tab appears. So right now I'm on the center tab. I'm going to click one time and I should get a right tab. It says click the ruler at the one inch mark to set a right tab. 
deselect the list and place the insertion point in front of each word on the list and then press tab to um, right align each word so I'm gonna I'm going to hit tab 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 and tab okay the um, <clears throat> when setting a right tab press the tab key with the existing text or press tab key and then type the new text the text characters are aligned at the right and move to the left so they're aligned over here at the right and they move to the left save this document as in our lesson 4 folder per diem oh, first draft pause leave the document open to use in the next exercise all right next we're going to use leaders tab leaders are symbols such as dotted dashed or solid lines that fill the space before a tab in this exercise you practice setting tabs and leaders using the tabs dialog box so select the list of words again starting with breakfast and continuing to the end of the document on the home tab in the paragraph group we're going to click the um, um, dialog box okay and then we're going to click the tabs button down here at the bottom of the paragraph dialog box to display the tabs dialog box in the tabs dialog box you should see the one inch right tab in the tab positions tab stop positions area okay in the tab stops positions box we're going to type 2.6 okay oh whoops i need i didn't mean to press enter tabs Okay, and in, so I'm going to click on my 2.6 that I just set, and I'm going to select decimal in the leader section, and I'm going to select leader number 2, and then I have to hit set. Okay, after specifying values for individual tabs, you must click set to position the tab. In the tab stop position, type 4. Point one, and then we're going to select decimal again and we're going to select two and then set okay so one should be a right with no leader 2.6 should be decimal with a two leader and 4.1 should be a decimal with a two liter line Okay, it says refer to figure 4-22 and compare your screen. Okay, we're going to click OK to close the tabs dialog box. Notice that nothing has happened yet, but we do see our two leader lines appear on our ruler, our tab stops, decimal tab stops. Place the insertion point after the word breakfast and press tab. And then type... 1098 press tab and under the New York we're going to type 1250 repeat this process for each line typing the numbers shown in figure 4-23 okay so if you can't see that very well you can always can zoom in so you can see the numbers I'm going to click after the word lunch and I'm going to press the tab key. 1501 tab 1654. Click after dinner, press tab. Dollar sign 2678, press tab. 3145. Oops, I forgot my dollar signs here. Dollar sign there and a dollar sign there. Okay. Incidentals. Press tab. Three dollars. 
I'm going to press tab again and three dollars. Okay, after totals, I'm going to press tab, dollar sign 5577, and dollar sign 6349. All right, so um, you should have the dotted lines, and your um, decimal means that these are all going to align together at the decimal spot, all lining up at the decimal spot. Save this document as in our Lesson 4 folder. Oops, you know what? I just realized that that's in the wrong place. Per diem, I'm going to change this to second. Draft. Save. Okay, ooh, I probably better go back and fix that before I forget. So I want to make sure that's in my Lesson 4 folder. Okay. We're still using per diem second draft. All right, next we're going to be moving tabs. Still using per diem second draft. It says select the block of text beginning with breakfast and ending with 6349. Okay, include the non printing character in your selection. So make sure all of it is selected. Position the mouse pointer at the 4.1 inch tab on the ruler until you see the decimal tab screen tip. Click and drag the tab on the ruler to the 5 inch mark. Notice that the decimal tab setting for the 5 lines is positioned at the 5 inch mark on the ruler. With the text still selected, position the mouse pointer at the 2.6 inch mark until your decimal tab screen tip appears. We're going to click and drag this to the 3 inch mark. Okay, and release your mouse button. Notice that the decimal tab setting for the 5 lines is positioned at the 3 inch mark. Select Chicago and drag the center tab setting so that it is out through the three inch mark as well. Okay, next we're going to select New York and we're going to drag the four inch mark, the center tab, so that it is at five inches. Okay, double click the center tab on the ruler to open the tabs dialog box. Okay, to check the position of the tabs. They should be at 3 and 5 inches. Okay, If you want to select this and then uh, double click on these tabs, it opens up the tabs dialog box. Make sure these are at the 1, 3, and 5 inch marks. 1 or 3 and 5 should be decimal and 2. And the 1 inch mark should be set to none and right. Click OK. Save this document as per diem vinyl. Save. Stop and close Word. Okay. And next is the knowledge assessment followed by the two projects, 4-1 and 4-2.